Six downright terrifying true short horror stories. Story number one. I was driving home from work one night when I saw a woman standing on the side of the road. She was hitchhiking and she looked lost and scared. I pulled over and asked her if she needed help. She got in the car and told me that she had been broken down on the side of the road for hours. She said that she had tried to call for help, but her phone had no signal. I felt bad for her, so I offered her a ride home. She told me that she lived in the next town over, so it wasn't too far out of my way. We started driving, and she told me a little bit about herself. She said that her name was Sarah, and that she was a student at the local college. She was on her way home from a friend's house when her car broke down. As we were driving, I started to notice some strange things. Sarah was acting really fidgety and nervous. She kept looking over her shoulder, and she seemed to be on edge. I asked her if she was okay, and she said that she was fine, but I could tell that something was wrong. We were about halfway to her house when I saw a car in my rearview mirror. It was driving really fast, and it was getting closer and closer. I sped up, but the car behind me kept getting closer. I could see that it was a black van, and there were two men in the front seat. I started to panic. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't keep speeding forever, and I was afraid that if I pulled over, the van would pull over behind me. I looked at Sarah, and she was terrified. She was white as a ghost, and her eyes were wide with fear. I knew that I had to do something. I couldn't just let the van follow us. I saw a gas station up ahead, so I decided to pull in there. I thought that maybe the van would keep going, but it pulled in behind me. I got out of the car and ran into the gas station. I told the cashier that I was being followed and she called the police. The police arrived a few minutes later and they took the two men in the van into custody. It turned out they were wanted for kidnapping. The police told me that Sarah was very lucky. They said that the two men had been targeting young women who were hitchhiking. They would kidnap them and take them to a remote location where they would assault them. I'm so glad that I was able to help Sarah. I can't imagine what would have happened to her if I hadn't stopped to pick her up. Story number two. When I was just 10 years old, something really strange happened to me. I lived in a place in the United States where the houses were spread far apart. One of our neighbors was an old man who lived next to us and he gave me the creeps. His house had all its windows covered and his yard was all messy and overgrown. Every day after school, I had to walk past his house and he would often watch me or try to talk to me. Once in a while, maybe once or twice a month, he would come to our house at night and shine a flashlight into my bedroom window. I didn't tell my parents about this because I thought it would be best just to ignore it. Besides, my room was on the second floor, so I didn't think he could see much. Then, one summer night, I woke up because a flashlight was shining into my room. I heard a loud thud, like someone was putting up a ladder against the house. I got really scared when I heard knocking on my window, and there was the man, smiling and trying to get me to open the window. I screamed and ran to my parents, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was just imagining things, so we didn't call the police. Strangely, not even a week later, the man's house had a for sale sign, and I never saw him again. He was the creepiest neighbor I've ever had, and I'm happy I don't live near him anymore. Story number three. I went on a sudden solo road trip, and I got tired after driving for many hours. I found an empty rest stop with only a few lights on. I decided to take a quick nap in my car. After an hour, I woke up and needed to use the bathroom. I walked to the dark and empty bathroom building. I noticed only one stall door was closed. I went inside and shut the door behind me. In the stall, I heard a man's voice talking outside, which was strange because I hadn't seen or heard anyone for an hour. The man stopped talking and walked away. But then he returned and knocked on the stall door. I told him someone was inside, but he didn't respond and just kept knocking. I began to feel scared. 
That's when I saw an eye looking through the crack in the stall door. I made eye contact with the man, and he started screaming and banging his head against the door. I got really scared and decided to push the door as hard as I could. It burst open and the man fell. I ran out of the bathroom to my car. I quickly got in and tried to drive away, but the man slammed into my car. I sped off, and when I looked back, he seemed okay, just watching me. I drove all the way home without stopping. I'm still shaken up and have no idea who that man was or what he wanted, but I'll never stop at a rest stop again. Story number four. When I turned 30, I bought my first house in a not so great neighborhood. Most of my neighbors were friendly, except a man who lived two houses down. He'd show up at odd hours asking for small favors like food or water. But things got weird when he asked for money. One night, he urgently wanted me to teach him how to use his grill, even though it was midnight. I agreed and went to his house, but there was no grill. He asked me to go into the dark basement to get some meat from the freezer. I felt uneasy and declined, wanting to leave. As soon as I said I was leaving, I heard someone running up the stairs. I rushed home and looked out, but I didn't see anyone. This scared me, so I stayed home for days, only going to work. A week later, I talked to a neighbor and realized the house where the strange man lived had been empty for two years. It sent shivers down my spine. I moved out soon after, still not knowing who that man was or what he intended. It was a creepy and unsettling experience that still haunts me. Story number five. During the 2014 holiday season when I was in college, my family took a trip to visit relatives in the next state. I had to leave later that night due to school and drove alone. Around 8 p.m. on a nearly empty highway in a remote area, my car started acting up and eventually slowed down. Turns out I ran out of gas and my gas gauge was broken. I walked for about 20 minutes to a nearby small town to get gas. When I returned and filled up my car, a man approached me claiming his car broke down. However, I knew he was lying because I had walked that way and saw no broken down car. He asked for a ride or water, but I felt uneasy and declined. As I reached for water in my glove box, he got closer to my window. Sensing danger, I quickly drove away. I heard a harsh scraping sound as he attempted to harm my car. Looking back, I saw him chasing me briefly. Terrified, I drove to my cousin's house. Later, I discovered deep scrapes on my car. I reported the incident to the police, but nothing much came of it. I felt relieved to escape safely, but will always remember the chilling look of that man. Story number six. It all started when I was about 15 years old. I was a bit of a thrill seeker back then, and I loved to explore abandoned places. One day I heard about an abandoned house on the outskirts of town. It was said to be haunted, but I didn't believe in that stuff. So I grabbed a flashlight and headed out to the house. It was a dark and stormy night and the house looked even more creepy than I had imagined. But I was determined to go inside. I found a broken window and climbed through. The house was dark and dusty and the air was thick with the smell of mildew. I made my way through the house, my flashlight cutting through the darkness. I came to a staircase and started to climb up. The stairs creaked and groaned under my weight. I reached the top of the stairs and found myself in a long hallway. I walked down the hallway, my flashlight beam darting from side to side. I came to a bedroom door and opened it. The bedroom was empty except for a bed in the corner. I walked over to the bed and looked at it. The bed was covered in dust and the sheets were yellowed with age. I reached out and touched the sheets. They were cold and clammy. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around and saw a figure standing in the doorway. It was a woman, and she was wearing a long white dress. Her face was pale, and her eyes were black and empty. I screamed and backed away. The woman started to walk towards me. I turned and ran out of the bedroom. I ran down the hallway and down the stairs. I burst out of the house and ran into the night. 
I ran until I couldn't run anymore. Then I collapsed on the ground, gasping for breath. I looked back at the house, but there was no sign of the woman. I never went back to that house again, but I'll never forget the night that I saw the woman in white. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more horror content. Also, if you have any terrifying true horror stories of your own, please share them in the comments below. I love reading your stories and hearing about your experiences.